Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at HP Discover 2014. Brought to you by HP. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Las Vegas. This is Dave Vellante. I'm with Wikibon.org. And this is SiliconANGLE's The Cube. The Cube is a live mobile studio. We go out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. We're here live at HP Discover. Jeff Wies is here. He's the Vice President of Solutions Marketing at HP Autonomy. And Steve Spellacy, uh, Cube alum, uh, Director of HP Data Protection. Uh, the Data Protection software business That's is right. actually inside of the HP software business. Sometimes people forget about that, but gentlemen, welcome to The Cube. Thank you. So we're here at Discover, what's happening? What's the buzz, Steven? Well, two weeks ago we launched a, the second phase of our bold vision around adaptive backup and recovery. And with that we released uh, a new version, announced a release of a new version of Data Protector, which is our enterprise backup and recovery product, and two new companion products, which are all about making backup and recovery smarter and more efficient. Okay, so what's the reaction been to that announcement? Well, the reaction from customers, partners, and from analysts alike has been fantastic. Um, we're, we're bringing forth a new vision on empowering backup administrators with information through operational IT analytics. So we're collecting all sorts of information about what's happening at the source where things are being protected and where they're being protected to, the destinations of the targets. And we can capture that entire conversation and then iterate all the information that we learn about that conversation to improve and dynamically optimize backup. So we tell that story and we show it as a demo or we install it in the customer's data center. They see, they, they connect the dots and they see the value immediately. So Jeff, I wonder if we could talk a little bit about sort of the organization and where, how the pieces fit together. Maybe we probably should have started there, but why don't you take us through that? Yeah, well that's, that's really the interesting part, right? <laughs> um, but no, actually I'm glad you asked because this is kind of a, a marriage that makes a lot of sense and that is because you have HP, which is just synonymous with uh, IT infrastructure. And then on the other side, you have HP Autonomy, which is focused on information, understanding it, analyzing it, any form, 100%. And by marrying the two together uh, to do adaptive backup recovery, we're, we're kind of blending those two different approaches that nobody else in the industry has done. Now that being said, to, you know, to answer your bigger question, HP Autonomy is now firmly part of HP Software. And in fact, what was just uh, announced two weeks ago uh, is Robert Youngjohns, who headed HP Autonomy, is now in charge of all of HP Software. So we're starting to see, you know, it's not a small business, it's about a $5 billion business. And we're seeing now the pieces of it going from one part, uh, data protection and analytics, to application development, even security, starting to gel together as kind of one whole. That's starting to happen here in Discover, and the technologies we're using for this announcement kind of reflect that. So uh, it's, it's an evolution from what was a bunch of different parts within one organization to one organization through and through. Well, what I like about it, at least on my inference, is that you basically a lot of companies just look at archiving and backup as okay, just do it and forget about it. Yes. It sounds like you have a different philosophy of let's get value out of that corpus of data. Is it's that fair? all about that, Dave. So yeah. the old style, the old world was a lot easier. You know, probably was a homogeneous data center at one point with one vendor solution. That isn't the way it is now, you know that. So it, you have to be able to deal with all the sort of the, the variables in the data center, whether it's a, you know, uh, an investment in traditional mission critical applications and new infrastructure like 3PAR and other you know, disruptive storage platforms and things like virtualization, which have completely changed the landscape of how we deploy IT services. Now, having to deal with all that, if you will, variety and the velocity of information that's created is the real challenge. So the set it and forget it just doesn't work anymore. You're, you're, you know, the importance of your data changes over time. Uh, decisions over what resources should be used and when have to change based on the priorities of the organization. So what we've done with adaptive backup and recovery is actually given smarts into the backup application that can look at a given application stream, whether it's a file system, a mission critical app like SAP Oracle Exchange, or infrastructure itself like a snapshot integration with a leading vendor like 3PAR and others 
and basically allow the administrator to fine tune and, if you will, rank stack the order of importance of the applications and who should get and dictate access to certain backup resources in a given window of time. Now that we call prioritization, which was the first phase of our strategy we launched in November of 2013. What I uh, mentioned earlier was the next phase which we call prediction where we can leverage IT operational anal analytics to actually improve and iterate backup and recovery performance availability leveraging the information we collect to fine-tune and if you will dynamically optimize how the operation works and those smarts Jeff come from autonomy yes is that right those analytics come from us that we brought into it because that's what we understand and that powers these four phases just to finish them off it's prioritization, prediction, which is being able to look ahead, and if you will, I like to say look around corners, because nothing is straightforward in IT. So you want to be able to look around that corner to go, where am I exposed? You know, I watch the color drop out of people's faces when I go, who's running different remote locations? We call it robo, remote office branch locations. And everybody puts up their hand because very few uh, uh, don't have that. The lawyer. <laughs> uh, Not my problem. The secretary. <laughs> yeah. But the issue is that stuff used to be create, and we had a customer today that said, you know, when we deployed a solution, we put something there, but that wasn't essential. Our business critical stuff was in the data center, and the further you got out to the edge, less important. You lose a laptop here or there, it's okay. Well, nobody is saying that anymore. Often your most critical data is actually at your edge. And the stuff that is actually in your data center, is still important, but not maybe the most timely needed information. If you're running a bunch of distribution centers or retail stores, and so all of a sudden that's turning on its head, how do I approach that? Um, but the, the key thing that's resonating, you know, the four areas are prioritization, prediction, recommendation, and automation. And what's really resonating, especially with IT managers, is the recommendation. Because we make it clear that analytics, when it's the most useful, it's augmenting your intelligence. It's not replacing your intelligence. You, it's bringing and culling together information and giving you insight so you can make the right calls. And it's allowing a backup administrator or director of IT to be more strategic. And that's what we're focused on um, and that is resonating hands down with the people that we're talking about. So we're, ba we're, we're basically taking backup out of the basement and bringing it into the boardroom. So I wonder if we can unpack these four a little bit in, in that context. So the prioritization, it sounds like it's, so it's a backup resource allocation you know, concept. Yes. Um, to meet an SLA for an application. That's correct, that's correct. And, and the policy for that application is set by the business owner, presumably? That's and, correct. It can be set by the, uh, she through the data protector advanced scheduler, you have the ability to define the critical applications, the windows in which you'd like those to run, and the resources you'd like to have leverage in that policy, as well as limits or thresholds that you like to impose. What's, the, as, what's the syntax with which I interact with that system? Is it? Things like RPO, RTO, is it high, medium, low? Is it either yeah, of those if I choose? Definitely on the definitely on the time side, we're looking at, you know, we need to get the data collected and protected in this given time. Um, when you look ahead and you want to, after you've analyzed the data, after you've created a bunch of backup, um, we do have the way a, a way of predicting potential RTOs. So we can look at the typical backup jobs and the result of those sessions, and then using our analytics, predict a best effort RTO that, a, that an IT director or backup admin can utilize and say, look, the best I can get on recovering this mission critical app is from yesterday at this point in time, and it's going to take me this amount of time to recover. Okay, so that's, the, that's part of the prediction. They're telling me I only got three minutes left. We, got, we need more time. So, so that's part of the prediction piece. Yeah, it's part right? of, it's part of and, and it's interesting because the things we do in prioritization are later leveraged in, in prediction. And you mentioned RTO, what about R RPO? Yes. That's in there as well. Right, and you know, what it, when it comes down to RPO, you have to make tough choices about what you protect, how often, and what style of protection you leverage. You know, if we're talking about a mission critical database and you're leveraging three-part infrastructure, you may want to leverage snapshot integration where you can get the if you will, the most application consistent image of that data, and you can do it in a short period of time, leveraging hardware or offloading it. So it's, it, making, it's making choices at the end of the day. How do we choose to protect? And the recommendation piece? 
That's uh, what, am I, what am I getting recommendations on? Recommendations are effectively the console is being educated by the data that we collect. So telling you where your potential optimizations may exist and then giving you the levers and, if you will, the dials to make those changes. And, and if, I, if I will, there's, there's three products to be really clear. Yeah. What we're launching is DP or Data Protector 9.0. So that's yep. the major release, and that is the heart and soul of adaptive backup recovery. And we've announced that, and we're shipping that imminently. Then there are two what I'll call companion products that are in the front seat with you. Backup Navigator and Microsoft SCOM Data Pack. The Backup Navigator actually is backward compatible for our entire install base, going back to Data Protector 7.0. It is analytics on steroids. 80 preformed analytics screens, you can customize them. It's got a social networking capability so you can share and collaborate. It lets you look at what happened, what's happening, and what will happen. And then the Microsoft SCOM is for organizations that want that telemetry to look holistically at all the resources. Now we plug right into that. You see that hierarchical tree analysis and that way you can fold right in how you're managing your enterprise today. So those two last products already shipping you already can go to autonomy.com or hp.com, download the trial today. So that's out and running in the race already. And the backup navigator, so it's a, it's a re reporting type reporting of capability? Reporting analytics package, and, and analytics. highly customizable dashboard. It's, you know, if you will, it's an executive dashboard with a detail behind it. So what, when you say, Jeff, what happened? You mean like how long it took? Was it successful? You know, what the, what the rate of you know, backup was? Changes, all kinds yes. Of, yeah, okay. yeah. And then a projection of what likely, based on how I've been performing, and the different dimensions of it, how I'm likely to perform in the future, and am I going to run out of gas? So it gives you a look ahead capability. All right, so you can anticipate. Capacity planning, you know, better planning around the storage yeah. footprint in the data center, when you may need to deploy more store once in this case. But the best thing is it's cool looking. Yeah, yeah. It is yeah. the coolest yeah. looking nice interface, yeah. product around backup and recovery around storage that you've ever seen and it's got more colors than a rainbow, and if that's not reason to download and try it out, <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, know what else there is. And where do they download it? Uh, HP.com? You can get it on uh, hp.com slash go slash data protector, which is our landing page. hp.com slash go slash, slash data protector, okay. Uh, two last questions, because I'm getting the hook. Steve, uh, what's the bumper sticker? Leaving Las Vegas, HP Discover 2014, what's the back of the bus, what's the bumper sticker? Yeah, say? for me. Don't mix beer and wine <laughs> yeah, and beer before vodka based cocktails. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. You can never get that right. Yeah, liquor, I mean, never quicker. No, I, you know, it's, what I see is, I mean, we, what, what we're doing in our portfolio is reflective of HP's big bets. What we're doing, you know, at a micro level is really making backup smarter and more efficient. It's about saving customers money, you know, reducing the amount of burden and time. And we had a, we had a great session this morning with a customer um, from White River Health Systems. We talked about how they reduced their backup windows, but also reduced their administrative burden from four hours a week of admin down to 20 minutes. It's about making better decisions with what we've got, doing less in less time. Smarter and more efficient. Yeah. All right, Jeff, where do you want to take this, this, this you know, division, this vision, where, where do you see it going in the next 12 to 18 months? Well, this is one part of our embracement of information. You know, backup and recovery is the first touch point for many organizations where IT really touches that user-generated information. And that's the first inning of the game. Because from there, we want to, of course, manage it, govern it, analyze it, harness it, and act on it. And what we're trying to do with an HP software is connect those pieces. So many other of the vendors in the industry look at those in little nice little silos. And that doesn't address what you're trying to do. You have to look at the whole. And so, I don't know if it's our bumper sticker, but we let people see the whole elephant, not just the trunk or the tusk. <laughs> And that is really what we're trying to achieve here. I don't know of any other uh, software company that spans the broad reach that we have in HP software. This is one part, but if you really want to rock and roll with us, look at the whole elephant. Excellent, gentlemen, we've got to leave it there. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It's great Thanks to have you again. Great to see you, buddy. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with our next guest. This is Dave Vellante. We'll be back with Jeff Frick right after this.